G'day, it's Robbie Regain. Well, as you know, buying a lathe is all very exciting and very useful and it's one of the best tools you can have in the workshop for sure, one of the best machines. And it doesn't have to be big, it can be, you know, any old size you want. So you rush out, you get yourself a lathe, you spend all that hard-earned cash and then you go and buy tooling and then you go and buy measuring equipment and then you make a stand and, you know, it's quite an outlay. But the outlay doesn't stop there. You've then got to feed the beast. You've got to feed the thing. And still, uh, it's not much of an issue because you can generally pick up scrap steel and play around on that and you can go and buy steel. And overall, it's not that expensive uh, when you look at it in real terms. But the killer with... Uh, lathes and machining is aluminium. You go and buy aluminium and it's difficult to buy it from the scrapyard in any decent sort of configuration. So, you know, if you go and buy it from the dealers, you know, brand new, well, you're up for an arm and a leg and probably the dog's back leg as well. You know, it's pretty expensive, really. In fact, it's a terrible price. So like a lot of uh, backyarders, I cast my own aluminium. I just get scrap aluminium and I melt it down and into moulds and it's, you just cast your own stuff. And while it's never going to be as good as the stuff you buy from the metal merchants, it's still plenty good enough to make stuff and you can turn out some pretty high quality work with it. And uh, I'll show you the, well, the little pile I've got under my bench here. You can just see sort of the odds and sods that I've just got ready to hand and none of it cost me a cracker. And here's a look at the stockpile under the uh, Chinese lathe stand. Now you can see there's quite a bit of stuff there. If you went and bought that, that would all cost you a lot of money. It didn't cost anything because it's just all melted down scrap. Here's a look at my scrap aluminium drum. There's all sorts of odds and sods in there. Some of that aluminium's good quality and some of it's absolute crap. And today we're going to be looking at the difference. Uh, I'm going to show you some real crap and uh, just show you how it machined up. It was pretty awful, I must say. But at least it gives you an idea of what the variables are and what not to use for, you know, certain jobs. I got by with it, but it was uh, it was pretty horrible stuff. So to make a piece of aluminium like that, cast it up. It's not bad quality. This. It's, it's, machined up quite nicely. What you need is a tin can to cast into or a piece of round tube to cast into. The beauty of this being that you can reuse this whereas the tin can you have to destroy it to get the, the metal out. Or if you're feeling like a bit of uh, rectangular stuff you just make up a little mould and, and cast it into that. And as I've said, the quality of the aluminium has a big effect on determining how the machining uh, goes, how, how well it machines, and of all the aluminium that I've used, by far the absolute best is this junked mag wheel. So this is what you want. If you can get your hands on old mag wheels, cut them up with a, uh, a saw and then melt them down, that is the best aluminium by far. To machine that I've ever used. As you would have seen in my last couple of videos I bought a little get 2p action cam to do some um, on-road uh, videos on my old Ducatis. But the problem with this uh, camera, even though it's a great little camera, is that it doesn't have its own mounts and you have to use GoPro mounts and this particular one, this particular one has the, uh, the Panasonic lens and it won't fit in a normal GoPro uh, waterproof case, uh, one that's all enclosing, because this lens is a bit too long. So I did buy a waterproof case, GoPro for it, with the idea of modifying it, basically hacking it. And I have done that, but along the way, of course, I had to machine up some aluminium to do the job. 
and when I went through my stockpile of aluminium I could have had a variety of aluminium but I'll show you what I chose. I could have chosen anything out of this that was a suitable diameter but unfortunately it wasn't all big enough diameter. This would have done the job but I forgot I had this bit stashed away and so I grabbed the only bit of aluminium this size which I had and that was this stuff. Now that looks okay when you look at it. It's been machined and you think, oh yeah, look at that. That's turned up okay. You'd think that would be good aluminium. But this aluminium is actually an alloy that came from the cutting plate from a lawnmower. Those little you know, rotary lawnmowers, they have the aluminium base plate for the engine to sit on and the cutter whizzes around under there. And I've got to say, this stuff is absolute shit. Like, this is the worst aluminium I have ever machined in my entire life. It's probably closer to some sort of die cast. It's rubbish, honestly. Seriously. I mean, you compare, just looking at the end finish, you can see straight away, this is some really high quality aluminium. This is mag wheel aluminium. Look at that. And then you look at that. I mean, it's got porosity in it as well. The whole casting it was terrible, but it just shows you the difference straight away on the quality. You can tell by the way it's faced off. Big difference, big difference. Okay, I thought, well, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be anything super high quality. I can live with that. So I machined up the gadget, which I'll show you in a minute. But if you want to see how bad this is, just check out this end. Now this is where I tried to face it off and par I parted it off. We'll come in close on this. Now that has got to be the worst aluminium I have ever seen in my life. Have a look at that. Look how, I mean, the parting off blade took ages to part it because it just kept bogging down in this stuff. I finally got through, but I mean, it was horrific. You can see the chatter marks. It, absolutely the worst and here's where I've faced it with a carbide cutter I mean carbide's not good for aluminium you should use high speed steel and I did later finish off the job with high speed steel but you can see how it just tore up using carbide I tried it with coolant and without coolant you know, lube rather but you know I just had to show you this I mean just to show you that that's the sort of difference you get between aluminium when you cast your own stuff at home. I also like to mark it, you know, this is soft. I mean, the soft stuff generally for machines better than the, than the hard. So sometimes I, you know, I'll mark it if I can't remember. But overall, yep, that's bloody awful. So how did the job turn out? Well, it actually still turned out okay because even though it was the worst aluminium I've ever used, I still managed to machine it, it still did the job, it still cost me nothing, and I basically modified the GoPro case by making up a, a new front for it, into which is recessed a filter mount off the internet. I got that off eBay for a couple of bucks, and that's actually just back inside like goes into the aluminium the aluminium is bonded on with Tarzan's grip I didn't worry about the screws that was too because you mean you're going to get a better seal with just using some glue it's not going to come off and the way this little gizmo works is it's uh, it's pretty nifty because it takes a a filter you feel them. This is all made of aluminium, this little thing, and it screws on. Like so. So now it's completely waterproof. It's not something you take underwater, but it's water resistant for sure. And you can take the filter off or replace it if you have to. And it even got a little lens cap so you can actually not worry about getting your, your filter dirty. Uh, while you're transporting it, you know, before you set up to do filming. So, overall, it's pretty good. I'll put the camera and you can see how it fits. 
And here it is with the camera in it. And you can see it. It all worked out nicely. So, you know, even though some of the backyard casting aluminium may not be really fantastic stuff, it's still good enough to machine and you can play around with it and, you know, it's better than nothing. In this case, case it came up okay with some high-speed steel. You can still see some machine marks on it, but oh, too bad, I'm not going to worry about that. Could put a bit of black paint on it, I suppose, and you'd never notice the difference. But overall, you know, it just shows you um, there is a big difference in the metals that you come across during backyard casting. And take from me, if it's on a lawnmower, well, I think, forget it. <laughs> Not unless you're a masochist. So it is absolutely the worst aluminium in the world. Okay, that's it from me. See you next time. Cheers.